What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the trucking journey. I'm Trucker Jim coming to you from Birmingham, Alabama. Today, I don't know if I'm making the world a better place. I brought a truckload of junk food from Mexico. There's cookies, there's Ritz crackers back there. This will probably be a good week for potato chip sales, chicken wing sales, because it's college football time, people. Come with me now. What's up everyone? Welcome to the Trucker Jim channel. If this is your first time, thanks a lot. Please consider subscribing. I drop a new video every Thursday and this week we're going to be talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks. That is my college football team. It has since 1984 and well, it is now a new era in Gamecock football and we were due for one. Will Muschamp, the coach that took Steve Spurrier's place for the last five seasons after accumulating a 28 and 30 record, he was fired. And there definitely was some bad coaching going on. And Thanksgiving being just a meal? Come on, man! But South Carolina has a new lead dog, a new head coach, and this is a football guy. The media will say this was a bee hire because Shane Beamer's never been a head coach. He's never even been an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator. Those things are true. But as we get to know more about the man Shane Beamer and his history, where he comes from, his football IQ, and the winners that he has been exposed to, this may just be the perfect hire. Thank you, Coach Tanner. Thank you, President Caslin. It's an absolute honor to be the head football coach here at the University of South Carolina. Today is an absolute dream come true, not just to be a head football coach in the Southeastern Conference, but to be the head coach at the University of South Carolina. Now, the first thing that comes up about Shane Beamer is his dad, Frank Beamer, Hall of Fame head coach from Virginia Tech. If you've been watching college football, you've heard of him. They played for the national championship back in 99, I believe it was, when Michael Vick was a quarterback. Yeah, Shane was on that team. His dad was a head coach. Shane came out for Pro Day. He was a defensive back, and then they asked, are you serious? So he's been in coaching ever since, which is a more than 20-year career as a coach after growing up as the son of a legendary coach. And Shane tells a story. He was born in South Carolina in Charleston that his dad always considered South Carolina as an ideal situation that is primed to win big time. But Beamer spent some time as a grad assistant with his new offensive coordinator now, Marcus Satterfield at Tennessee, but his first real coaching job and recruiting coordinator was to help Sylvester Croom, first African-American head coach in the, in the SEC of Mississippi State. After a few years with Sylvester, he joined Steve Spurrier's staff at Carolina and was responsible for some of the key legendary Gamecocks being recruited, like Marcus Lattimore, Jadavion Clowney, Stephon Gilmore. The list goes on. And during those Spurrier years, Beamer's first stint as a Gamecock laid the foundation of the greatest run in Gamecock football history. Beamer's last season with the Gamecocks, prior to now, was in 2010 when we played Auburn for the SEC Championship in Atlanta. After that, he left to spend five years with Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech as assistant coach and interim head coach, and they won games. Anybody ever heard the phrase, Beamer ball? Beamer ball! Yeah, that's the thing. Beamer ball. And a big part of it is making things happen on special teams. We'll come back to that. But yeah, after time with his dad at Virginia Tech, when Kirby Smart was named the new head coach of Georgia, he hired Shane for his first staff. Spent a couple of years there, was in the college playoffs, and then when college football allowed a 10th coach to the staff, Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma called Shane up, made a new position for him working with tight ends and special teams at Oklahoma, and that's where Shane was when Muschamp was fired. There were some big names that came up, Hugh Freeze and others, but with former Gamecock players, only one name came up, Shane Beamer, and he is now the head coach of the University of South Carolina. I've heard from so many of them the last couple weeks, and I told my wife when this pro process was going on that I didn't know how this thing was going to finish, 
But regardless of what happened, I would, I would have been crushed if this thing didn't happen. But I told her just the amount of former players that I heard from during this time that reached out to me or that I found out reached out to Coach Tanner and our administration to recommend me and jump on the table for me was extremely, extremely humbling. It reaffirmed why I coach. Uh, obviously, Saturdays are important. Wins and losses are what you're judged on, but the opportunity to have an impact on a young man's life and to have a guy like a Marcus Lattimore call me out of the blue and, and tell me stories of things that I barely remember that he talked about conversations we had. Before we get into the players, let's just talk briefly on the staff that Shane Beamer has put together. Keep in mind, this man has been in coaching his whole life, professionally for 20 years, building relationships, planning for when he gets his opportunity. For starters, offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield. Where did Marcus Satterfield come from? He left the Carolina Panthers, where he was an offensive assistant to Joe Brady. Joe Brady? Yeah. Where have you heard that name before? Well, that was Joe Burrows from LSU who had his magical national championship season. Well, yeah. Joe Brady was the offensive coordinator of that. Where Satterfield was prior to the Carolina Panthers was with Matt Rule. Matt Rule was a head coach of Baylor for years until he became the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Reason I bring that up. That's good offensive pedigree. Defense, look out. It's a 5-4-2 defense. I can't wait to see how it works. It's Clayton White. He came from Western Kentucky. The guy has an amazing history. He was a linebacker at NC State when he played. He's got a lot of records for NC State for sack. Well, not sacks, but tackles for loss. And his teams have played the same way. But keeping it going with defense, the biggest question mark for Carolina this year is the defensive backs. But that question mark could straighten up and be an exclamation point because Torian Gray is our cornerbacks coach. On the other side of the ball for the wide receivers, Justin Stepp, I like this guy, kinda reminds me of Dabo Sweeney. But what I believe is gonna turn out to be the secret weapon of the Gamecocks is their new strength coach, Luke Day. I'm gonna show you guys just a, a short clip when he was introduced to the media. Just what in your opinion from just your experience over the years makes a great strength and conditioning coach? Uh. A man that can draw out the version of a young man he could not elicit himself. And if, if these kids could just train and we hand them a packet, we should just send them to the rec center. But if, there's a, if you can put the right people around him that, and, and I'm going to steal uh, one of my favorite terms of just defining what a coach is from, from our, our, our senior associate or whatever, we're, I don't even know what we're allowed to call him yet, but Chip Morton, 27-year NFL head strength coach that's going to join us here and is here on this staff, um, is man's heart are deep waters. And the insightful man, a, a real coach, draws that out of him. And there's, the, there's deep water down there in the well, and we got to go dig it out. And that's what I have to do. Physically, this game is still about putting your hands on people and making them go where they don't want to go. And we have to train people that way. And there's a certain mindset that you have to do. There's a certain mentality that has to be uh, taught and brought and instilled in people. And then uh, a resilience like it's one thing if you're if you're a Ferrari type dude and you can go and you're explosive, that's great. But can you repeat it? Can you go round after round after round? And people that get trained that way, uh, those are the people doing it the right way in this business, in my opinion. Special teams, Beamer Ball, remember that, right? Well, we've hired a new special teams coordinator, Pete Limbo. Pete has consistently had the teams. He's the special teams coordinator up there in the top as far as blocking punts, bringing punts back, kick returns, special teams. It's the third phase of the game. The facilities at Carolina are second to none. That's all I keep hearing, especially this new indoor facility. All the players have iPads, and the things they can do with their iPads, well, of course you can have your entire playbook, but you can have game film on there, all kind of stuff. These are going to be some prepared football players. 
But speaking of the players, let's do a, a quick rundown. Quarterback, it's kind of a question mark. The guy we were expecting to be the guy is Luke Doty from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He was a four-star quarterback, and this kid is fast. He may be the fastest one on the team. He runs a 4-4-40, but Luke's probably not going to play the first game. He's got a foot injury. So, who else? Well, there's a transfer called Jason Brown. He came from a smaller school, St. Francis, and didn't even play last year because of COVID. The year before that, he lit it up. Threw for over 3,000 yards. Broke the school record. He was a little chubby when he came, but he's dropped about 20 pounds since the spring, and he's playing his best ball. But when Doty went down, something kind of cool happened. There was a grad assistant that was Trey, that quarterback that got drafted from Nevada that got drafted by the 49ers in the first round. Well, Zeb Nolan was his backup. They were roommates, best friends, practiced together. And the few times Zeb did get to play Georgia play action Nolan taking a shot for Butler on the back shoulder and Butler breaks around the tackle they can't get this guy down and they can't catch him touchdown Iowa State he really lit it up well he had graduated he's a grad assistant but because of the coronavirus and everything he had a year of eligibility left on and well we'll see what happens he may suit up who are they going to throw it to? There's not really any returning reliable receivers. But there are some returning receivers like DeCarian Joyner, who is Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina. Oh, I think he's here. White's in there, but Doty wants to throw it. He's got to step out of the pocket, dump it down. DeCarian's got it at the 12, inside the 5, for the pylon. Did he get there? Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown to Kirion Joyner. He was a quarterback in high school. He's made the transition to receiver. And maybe there's some gadget plays, halfback pass, wide receiver pass plays. He's the guy that can really do those kind of things. There's also Josh Van. He's been around a few years. But before, you know, there's Brian Edwards in front of him. Shy Smith, Debo, Van. It's your chance to be the man. There's also Otre Smith coming back. He's a big, tall receiver. Couple of transfer receivers. So we'll see how that goes. I think it's going to be better than it was last year, which wasn't very good. But what was good last year was our running back play, specifically Kevin Harris. Thousand, but this run by Alabama has been unprecedented. Kevin Harris breaking some tackles. Harris breaks another tackle. Touchdown for the freshman. 75 yards. I don't know if it's just his size. It's From the first time this guy touched the ball at USC, he got in because it was a blowout game, and we were already ahead, and they handed it to him, and... Well, he ran it like 80 yards for a touchdown. He did it twice in the game. I think he had two touchdowns and two carries or something like that. And that's kind of how he rolls. After getting over 1,000 yards in our 2-8 and eight All-SEC season last year, he's back. Along with Marshawn Lloyd, which was a four-star recruit. Didn't get to play last season at all because of a torn ACL or something, but he's back. Supposed to be stronger than ever. There's another running back, Zaquandre White. And then what everybody's talking about is Juju. Juju, they got him as 5'9", but I think that's stretching him a little bit. He is a small running back that is insanely fast and crazy strong. I was reading an interview from his head coach saying he benches over 300 pounds and squats over 600 pounds. And he's 177 pounds himself. Off the chart strength from such a small guy. My mom always loves the little running back, so mama get excited for Juju. There's a good tight end room, too. The offensive line, led by Dylan Wonham and Eric Douglas, is supposed to be the biggest strength going into the season. So things could happen. For the Gamecocks, So here's just the flat-out truth. The Gamecocks have one of, if not the, toughest schedules in all of college football. Like, we play Clemson every year. in Georgia and Florida and Tennessee and Kentucky and Texas A&M sometimes Alabama, it's a pretty brutal schedule. So you better bring it. But that's why the best players are going to come play at Carolina 
for the best competition. Shane Beamer. I think it's a great hire. I like everything about this guy. I love the staff he's put together. I love the attitude. But we gotta wrap this video up. I can't get into the nutrition staff, the disguises on defense. I hadn't even got into the tight end room. But the tight end coach, I can't believe I almost did not mention Eric Kimry. Where have you heard that name, Eric Kimry? Well, for true Gamecock fans, there was a dark time. Two and eight? That ain't bad compared to Carolina had a 21 game losing streak. Lou Holtz was hired. Legendary Lou Holtz from Notre Dame, right? Inherited a team that had only won one game the year before. Well, his first year, he didn't win any games. But then the 2001 season started and they won and won again and won a third. And in the fourth game, Phil Petty was the starting quarterback. They were playing Mississippi State. It was fourth quarter. They had a game-winning drive, and Phil Petty went down. Well, I think Petty got hurt. Yeah, he's hobbling. Eric Kimry off the bench. I don't think he threw a pass all season. Stepped up. He had told the coach, I can throw the fade. And the fade he did throw. This fourth down, he's not had a snap. Here comes that pressure. Lofts it up, looking for Terry. Touchdown! Can you believe it? Gamecocks went on to have a turnaround season, and winning became a thing again. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the so you'll get notifications, but a new video goes up every Thursday. Go Cox! I'm on my way to Laredo, so until next week, be safe out there and keep on trucking.